This is the brand new DJI Osmo 360, and this is DJI's first 360 camera ever. Now, I've been testing out this camera for the past two months, so in this video, we're gonna go over everything that's new and different with this 360 camera compared to other 360 cameras on the market, as well as the app experience, and whether you should be buying this camera or not. So right off the bat, the design is pretty similar to what we're used to seeing. You have two cameras on each side, and a screen on one side, and some buttons to help with the operation of the camera. The screen is a touch screen and lets you navigate the various menus. Where DJI has departed from other 360 cameras is that the base is also magnetic, so you can use your other mounts from cameras like the Osmo Action 5 Pro, and it also has a quarter inch thread for screwing it into things like the invisible selfie stick. DJI has also made it so that you can use batteries from other action cameras as well, so if you have Osmo Actions laying around, you don't have to go out and buy a set of new batteries. And speaking of batteries, this is rated for a runtime of about 100 minutes on a single battery when filming in 8K at 30 frames per second, which is just absolutely insane. It also has a 125 gigabyte SSD on board, of which 105 gigs is usable for internal memory and recording straight to the device, so you don't really even need a memory card. I'm not kidding when I say that on every single shoot or every single time I took this camera out, I just took one battery and no memory card. The battery never died and the storage never ran out. Now let's get into some of the amazing video specs on the DJI Osmo 360. At the time of this recording, this is actually the world's highest resolution and highest frame rate 360 camera period. This camera records in 8K at up to 50 frames per second. Now before everyone gets super excited if this is your first 360 camera that you've ever seen, the way the 8K image actually works is that each of the cameras records a 4K image and then the camera stitches it together to create a giant spherical 8K image. So your output is still going to be in 4K, this is not really an 8K camera. Unless you're doing one of those tiny planet effects then you will get an 8K image, but most of the time you're going to be outputting to 4K. This the camera also has a first of its kind type of sensor. So this is the first true one inch 360 degree imaging sensor that we've seen on a 360 camera. Now the way that typical 360 camera sensors usually work is that the sensor is a rectangle and then because the 360 camera needs to be a circle, there's a bunch of dead space on both sides. So without making this overly complicated, all DJI has done is that they've cut off those excess rectangular sides, leaving more space for the sensor and more space for the image and also making the camera body a lot smaller as well as making the stitching easier and that's how they've gone to that true one inch 360 degree imaging sensor. Now this camera also has 13 and a half stops of dynamic range according to DJI. Now for a 360 camera I just thought that that was absolutely absurd but looking at these images I don't really doubt it. The images coming out of this camera look fantastic and have much better dynamic range than I could have ever expected. Now speaking of that true one inch 360 degree imaging sensor it does a ton of heavy lifting in low light conditions. 360 cameras have traditionally always struggled in in low light, but this one is absolutely fantastic. I've used it in a number of lighting conditions that I would not pull out a 360 camera in. Initially, when 360 cameras first came out, you can only use them in perfect lighting conditions. This, I would say, is the first one that I can really use in low light comfortably without using the super night mode. Now, it obviously does have a super night mode, so if you do end up in a situation where everything is super dark and you can't see anything and you want some AI assistance, DJI has definitely provided that to help you improve your image quality. But me personally, I never had to use it and literally the image coming out of this even in dark conditions was absolutely fantastic that one inch 360 degree imaging sensor is a massive upgrade on the dji osmo 360. the osmo 360 has the standard incredible stabilization that you get out of 360 cameras and you would expect nothing less you're able to reframe your image just like any other 360 camera in pose and everything is sticky and where it should be regardless of how fast you're moving or if you're running or anything like that and speaking of pose this camera finally has what i've been begging for from 360 cameras. This camera has 10-bit DJI D-Log M. Now we're obviously used to seeing that picture profile on other DJI devices so it's amazing to see it here and as expected DJI D-Log M grades beautifully, is easy to work with and the colors look absolutely stunning. You get much richer images, better saturation and a lot more contrast whenever you're able to play around with the image and post yourself and really tweak it to your liking. Now if you don't know how to color grade or if you just don't want to spend the time color grading for 360 footage even though I think you should because the footage of this 360 camera is different than what you're used to seeing. DJI has also included a normal 10-bit color mode where you don't have to do any kind of color grading and because the footage is 10-bit, you will get 
richer contrast and much better colors and saturation in your image. So this is honestly my favorite part of this 360 camera, just the flexibility that you have in both picture profiles and finally the ability to properly color grade 10 bit footage out of a 360 camera. Now that's all the good, the 13 and a half stops of dynamic range, the D-Log M, the true one inch 360 degree imaging sensor, but what about all the bad? Well, first off, I do think that DJI has missed an opportunity here to have some kind of lens attachment modular system that other cameras are going to be having very soon. Now I could be wrong because if you head into the menus, you see this weird option for these transparent lens protectors. Now DJI never mentioned these to me and they never send them to me. And as far as I can tell, there's no real way to change the lenses or mount any kind of lens accessories. So I could be wrong, but if that does end up being the case, I do think that's a missed mark on DJI and an opportunity that they definitely miss, especially since Insta360 now has their replaceable lens guards and they do have some other exciting things coming up very soon. And the second area where I found that the DJI Osmo 360 was kind of lacking was in the app experience. Now keep in mind, I was using the beta app, so the app at launch will look significantly different than what I've been using, but this is where Insta360's experience really started to shine. One of the best ways to experience a 360 camera is all the incredible effects that you can do, like the giant nose effect that Insta360 automatically does for you if you put your camera in your mouth if you know you know now all these effects as far as i can tell are not present in the dji mimo app or in the beta version of the app so if you want to do any of these kind of effects you're kind of going to have to figure it out on your own through keyframes or editing in the app which is significantly different than insta 360's app which kind of just takes your footage tells you how to hold your camera and does everything for you so if i was a casual user looking to buy a 360 camera the insta 360 app experience would make it significantly easier for me to enjoy and use that camera which is obviously not the case here yet again i use the beta app i don't know what the public app and the final app will look like but i do feel like with the 10 bit dlog m and all the other features that we talked about this might be more of a prosumer level 360 camera versus a more fun 360 camera that being said Said, the app is really great for pro video editing. I was able to track all my subjects the way that I wanted, create any kind of keyframes, and export at the highest quality in seconds without any kind of issues to my phone, which I would then airdrop onto my computer and then edit the D-Log M footage in Final Cut Pro. So the entire workflow was seamless and worked really, really well for me, and I found no issues while using the app for the kind of work that I do. Okay, so the burning question and the reason why you probably clicked on this video, should you buy the DJI Osmo 3? 60, especially when something like the GoPro Max 2 is right around the corner and Insta360 has been in this space and dominated this space for so long. For me personally, I would pick this camera up in a heartbeat because it features things that I've been asking for from 360 cameras forever. The one in sensor, the 13 and a half stops of dynamic range, but especially the D-Log M. The footage coming out of this camera just looks professional and DJI is quickly becoming or has been for a while the apple of the camera industry. It's so easy to just pick up one of their cameras and fit it into your ecosystem of other DJI cameras like the Pocket 3 or the Osmo Action 5 Pro. Again, like I said earlier in this video, the batteries are interchangeable. And in case you were wondering, Yes, you can connect your DJI Mic 2 or your DJI Mic Mini seamlessly to this camera, just like you can to other Osmo Action cameras, making it really easy to put this into your camera lineup and use it alongside your other existing DJI cameras. So yeah, my final verdict, go ahead and pick one of these up. You won't regret it, but that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, keep creating.